The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. So once again, we find ourselves on the Mount of Transfiguration. This little layover between the Nativity Epiphany season and the Lent Easter season. Almost an opportunity to rise up above everything and catch our breath for a moment. Breathe in and bask in the glory of the promise once already given in the baptism and then will be again repeated after the resurrection, now stated a second time. This is my son. This is my beloved. This is the one to whom you should wrap your arms and your lives around. This is the one to whom you should anchor your identity in. This is for the disciples, Peter and James and John. A moment for them to really see, get a glimpse of who this Jesus truly is. Flanked by Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, everything culminating from the Old Testament, all the promise, all the hope, all the desire revealed here in this moment, and then the cloud overshadowing them with the voice of God coming down and saying, this is my beloved. Listen to him. This is the one who will remove the separation. This is the one who will ultimately redeem the world. Follow him. Now, in the midst of all this, Peter, like all of us, makes this indication that he wants to stay here, to stay above it. Let's make booths. Let me make you booths, Jesus. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Let's just camp out here in the glory, because this is just truly awesome. And if you get added some Starbucks and donuts, it'd be even better. Let's stay here. Let's stay in the glory revealed. That's not what happens. Because the one who is revealed, flanked by Moses and Elijah, the one who is wrapped in the cloud of God's voice and love, is one who goes down into the dirt and the dust and the muck. Jesus is not a Savior who sits on top of a mountain and wants people to come crawling to him. Jesus is a Savior who gets down in the dirt with the broken and the lost and the hurting. He is not one who requires the pain to come to him. He is one who goes to the pain. <coughs> Peter, as I'm sure James and John, they want to stay up on the mountain. They want to live in that experience. They want to bask in that glimpse. It was just supposed to be a peak. Just enough for them to get through to the end. But they want to stay there. They 
want to bask in it. Well, that's not what's going to happen. Jesus leads them back down the other side of the mountain, back down into the dust and the dirt and the pain. Jesus propels them back out into the world with the hope that this little glimpse would be enough for them to make it to the end. Of course, when we get to the end, which we'll get there in about six weeks, we'll see that they dropped the ball considerably. And before we want to dig into them about dropping the ball, let's be very clear that if our Lord and Savior was hanging on a tree and we were at the base, we would drop the ball too. That's why we love the disciples. Because they do for us what we know we would do ourselves. <coughs> Probably just afraid to admit it. Anyway, we see that they're going to drop the ball. We see that they're not going to get it. We see that they are going to come to the end and abandon. <coughs> but they really want to stay up in that place of revelation. And who wouldn't want to? Oh, to have those mountaintop experiences. Oh, to have those moments when God separates us from the ways of the world just long enough to open our hearts and our eyes and our minds to see the revelation of life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Oh, to be drawn out of the world just enough to be wrapped in that cloud and hear that voice of God come down and say, you are beloved. You are important. Oh, to have that moment. I'm going to start breaking out my Baptist preacher here. Oh, to have that moment. We do. Every week. Every week God takes us up off the mountain. Every week God pulls us aside. Every week God says, whatever's going on in your life, in your world, right now, it doesn't matter. Whatever's happening around you doesn't matter. Every week, God draws you up on the mountain. Right here, right now. This is our mountaintop experience. This is where we come and dwell in the presence of God. Yes, don't get me wrong, people. I am not one to believe that pain and suffering and hurt doesn't exist. And I am not foolish enough to believe that you can lay that at the door when you walk in here. I see it in your faces. I know your stories. But this is a place where we can come into God's presence and what is pressing in on us, it doesn't have to. Not here. Not now. Cancer is still going to be there when we walk out the door. Death is still going to reside when we walk out the door. But right now we can come in here and we can be wrapped in God's glory and wrapped in the promise of salvation and reminded again just how important we are. This is our mountaintop experience and we get it every week where God pulls us aside and wraps us in love and reminds us again who this guy on the cross is to us and who we are to him. We craft what we do here every week in such a way that when you come in, you come in with the assurance that there will only be a few surprises. That's the power of liturgy. You know what's going to happen. So you do not need to spend an hour and 15 minutes looking at what's coming next because you know so that you can fall into God's grace and fall into God's presence with a relatively high certainty that I am not going to zip line from the pinnacle up to the balcony. And if I do that, I'll do that during the sermon because you never know what's going to happen anyway. We craft ourselves in such a way to allow for that mountaintop experience. To come into this presence, to come into this place, to have our sins forgiven, to sing the songs of faith, to raise our chant crying out for mercy, to come to the table and receive the bread and wine, whether we dip it or drink it or kneel or stand, it doesn't matter. What matters is that God has pulled us up to the mountain to remind us how much we are loved. To remind us who this Jesus is. 
to hear those words again. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. In you I am well pleased. Now we don't stay here, obviously. Because if we stayed here long enough, then, well, it'd start to get a little bit stinky, wouldn't it? Yeah, we don't have any showers here yet. I keep, I keep arguing for one, but, you know, I haven't quite gotten it yet. No, we come up here on the mountain. We have our sins forgiven. We receive the Eucharist. We hear the word so that we too, like the disciples before us, can go back down off the mountain, out into the pain, out into the hurt, out into the brokenness, knowing that we go with the God who's defeated all of it. We are here to be refreshed and renewed and get a glimpse of God's glory so that we can go out into the world and take that glimpse out. In the many and various ways that we do. And then we come back. Because we're tired. And we're broken. And we're hurting. And we're empty. And we hear the words again. And we eat and we drink again. And maybe we even put our hands to the waters of baptism again. And we get renewed. And we come down off the mountain. And we go out into the world. And we come back again. See how that works? Over and over. Right now we stand on the mountaintop. Right now we stand in refreshment and renewal. May the God of grace fill us with the power to be restored and whole and go out into the world and get down on our knees and hands in the muck and the dirt and be with those who are hurting. Knowing that we can come back here and get healed again. All power and praise and glory be to God on high forever. Amen.